right, so what if we do a, a dot bead? Dots are made generally, not always. You could use a full rod. Boom, boom, boom. A lot of people do. Sometimes I do if I'm making bigger beads with bigger dots. Um, but often dots are made with stringers. Stringers are just little glass rods. Take a regular size glass rod, heat the end, pull it out, gives you a stringer, right? So let's do that first. We'll just make a couple of stringers, and then we'll we'll do some we'll do some dot beads. Get some practice in in that area. Okay. Here's a white. Where's my pizzas? Got to be able to grab the end, right? So I'll have those over here, and I'm gonna, as always introduce the glass rod, especially that fresh cut, point it away from me, point it down towards the towards the workstation, just in case it shoots any little bits and pieces, they can go over here. Do 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 once I know that the that the glass rod is not going to be popping anymore, it seems to be pretty stable, then I'll I'll move it down to this position. If I'm sending glass, this is how I hold the rod, right? But if I want to really build up a gather on the end, like for a stringer, I'll switch from this position to this position. It's just, it facilitates the process of balling up that glass on the end of the glass rod in a way that just makes my life easier. And now all I'm doing is I'm touching the surface of the flame, right? And I'm rotating slightly, slowly. The glass is heading towards the, the heat source, starting to drip. I catch it with my slow rotation and allow it to begin to ball up on the end of that glass rod. You can make, if it's a bigger gather, you can pull it into two stringers at once and just cut it in half. Or if you use a smaller gather like this one, we can probably just pull it into one stringer. So I'll come away from the heat, right? That's a molten gather on the end. I'll come away and I'll switch hands again or switch the position again where I hold it just because it'll give me more control this way. Okay? And now I want to just let it cool some before I grab it. If you grab it and pull it too soon, it's going to be a super thin stringer. And it, that's not as useful, generally speaking. So I'm going to come out of the flame, drip, let it drip into a longer bit, let it cool a little, and then I'm going to grab the end, and then I'll pull out slowly. It's almost like super slow-mo. Okay? And it'll get to a point where it just stops. Okay? You want to let that cool just a little bit more, and then come on over and cut that end. Right now, the end of that stringer, I'd like to take get rid of that ball because otherwise it'll it'll make for kind of a sloppy first dot. So I take my handy dandy kitchen tool and I clip that bitch off. Now, what I want to do is make a black one because I'd like to have a dot on a dot. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. This is just a, a, a good way to use up those glass rod ends is to turn them into stringers. Dun, dun, dun. Same idea. I just want to hold it at that sharp angle. Starts to drip and I 
This is a shorter rod, so I'm not actually rotating. I'm just rocking back and forth. The idea is the same. I'll get to that point where it's flowing freely. I'll come away. I'll change my position and let it sort of drip downwards, kind of elongates a little bit. I'll let it cool some, and then I'll grab the end and pull out. And really hold on to it with those pinces, with the with the, the 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 kitchen tool there that's grabbing it. I can't remember the name of it. Tut, tut, tut. Because it tends to, if you don't hold it real tight, it'll it'll slip away. Uh, you'll lose your grip. So again, I want to just clip off that end so I can always start clean. Okay. Now let's do a bead, and then we'll add some dots to that bead. As always, just want to work up, or warm up that work area. Do, do, do. This one, this glass rod had already been warmed, so it was less likely to be poppy. Plus, this glass is generally pretty stable. So I came in, I think, at a an angle that some would say was not like that obviously but I I do know from experience which ones tend to pop and which ones don't but still good idea to always point away from it when you enter there's no reason to be cavalier about it unless you're foolish like I was Ooh, he's out of control that guy all right drip 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 come away I see that flash on the on the workstation there, on the mandrel, I want to come away, let it cool a little bit, touch, go left to right, cover that first contact point so I don't end up with that little bit sticking out. And then I'm going to add the glass. If I wanted to, I could come down and just sort of smooth that, just so I'm always working on a smooth surface. Don't have to. Certainly could though. I'll do it with a longer or wider base. I'll do that on the first pass usually. We'll get into longer beads next. That's probably the next video I'll do. Do 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 laying that glass out, right? Always creating a are trying to create a nice level surface. It just makes it easier when you melt the bead if everything is already in place like that. It's not that it won't melt if it's wavy or has a lot of dips and valleys, that kind of thing. But I find it's just better. Look at that bit that jumped away. Hoo-wee! What's he going to do about that? Nothing. Because look how far away it is from the side of the bead. So since I'm doing a bagel shaped bead, it's probably not going to cause any trouble. So I'm just going to leave it there. If I really felt like it was going to be a problem, I could probably just come over to this edge and knock it off. But I'm not going to do that because I don't think it's an actual concern. Do, 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 do. Just put a little bit more down there. Wow. Okay. Switch to my strong hand. Melt that down. Ta, 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 ta. Surface of the flame. Stay right in the center of the flame. Like that. And that allows it to melt equally. And I kind of bop in and out with each rotation at the beginning. And that kind of helps it round out and center and balance all the good things that we want. Start to feel that. Feel that it's balanced and centered. And come away. Let it solidify. T 
Alright, so what are we doing? We're gonna add some dots. Kind of holding this at a sharp angle. I want that I want that glass to to uh, build up on the end of that uh, on the end of that stringer. I'm gonna leave the flame. I'm gonna touch right there, and then I'm gonna come back to the flame and separate. I don't want to separate back here because if I do, that'll just I'm gonna pull out a um, a string of glass, and then I'll come back to the flame, and that string will just sort of lay on the body of the bead. I don't want that. What I want is to be able to leave behind that glob, for lack of a better word, which will become the dot. Okay, let me let me just show you. Come away, pause, touch, come back to the flame, cut it, turn it down so it drips a little bit, and that kind of centers it, and then turn it up towards the top like that. Okay? And I'm going to use that as my as my grid dot, my first dot. And I want to put another one. I'm going to put it right there, which is like 25% away. So we'll do the same thing, same series of movements. Makes your life easier. Come back to the flame. Cut. Drip it. Drip it good. And then turn that to the top. And then that'll be my indicator as to where I should put the the next one. Okay. Drip. Back to the top. And now I've got those two, so I just want to put it in the middle of those two. More or less, right? Drip. Turn at the top. And now warm everything up. Because those dots, they cool quickly. They cool more quickly than the bead itself. And often you'll find, since if they're not settled in place quite yet, then you'll come back to the flame and they'll pop, pop off. So, you always want to be bouncing in and out of the flame and keeping things warm. And that's just a general rule. Again, if there were rules, that would be one of them. So, before I melt those dots in, I want to leave the flame and let everything cool so that when I start melting the dots in, they all enter at an equal rate. If half of the dots are one temperature and the other half are a different temperature, when they melt in, it can shift your design. So it's good to just leave the flame, let your dots and your bead cool a little bit, and then come back, okay? And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be directing the heat at the beads themselves. I mean at the dots, sorry. At the dots themselves, rather than at the bead, okay? I want the beads, sorry, I want the dots to enter into the surface of the bead as cleanly as possible because otherwise the, the circle that is the dot can be, the edges can become kind of frayed looking. If, it, if the dots enter in cleanly, then you have cleaner dots and a cleaner design. So come away, melt it in those in all the way, right? Do, 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 do. Those are perfectly fine.